what do you account for the brand taking off the way it did? Like what, why, like that's obviously a skill you guys have at e-commerce X, which is that ability to create magnetic brands. But what do you credit? Like, yeah, that, that, that takeoff was so immediate and abrupt and why you think it could have been such a great brand if you had the back end sort of out. Yeah. So we basically, the way, the way I look at things, especially e-commerce, you, there's a couple of facets, right? And for you as the marketing to work the way it did. So, you know, I'm, I'm not some kind of form of brand guru. I'm just fairly good at media buying, right? That's kind of my bread and butter. And so basically the, the reason why it took off. So we, the way I look at things, so I'm kind of rambling is that you have, you have to have either have a great offer because Facebook doesn't really do much. All you're trying to do is, is entice the click, right? And try and drive the traffic. And so you either have to have a great offer, something very unique. I know you spoke to Nick last week with the fidget spinner, right? It's a very unique product and it stands out. So people are, are likely to click. Or you have to have a really fantastic brand, right? Something like Apple, where they could post anything and most people click through because they know the brand. Um, so we, to start, we tried to push the offers. So we were doing tons of like free, free plus shipping. And people, people love at the moment, love to say that things are dead in online marketing, right? Like drop shipping's dead, free, but none, none of that stuff is dead, right? It, it really kills if you can get it right to the right audience. There's a real fine balance on testing for the price. And so at the moment, that's, that's what we drive a lot of. And the reason why we have such an advantage over people is because of the sourcing, right? We can source products so much cheaper than the competition that it means we can make we can make our prices so low on the front end that people like you have to buy right it's like when you're walking down the supermarket aisle and someone offers you a free sample right you're gonna you're gonna at least try it and so what we really focus on is we actually try to focus on saturated markets the reason being if for example the makeup niche is so so saturated but i know that most people for the larger companies really suck at buying media, right? So Sephora, for example, yeah, the brand is very recognizable, but I guarantee they probably don't make much money through paid acquisition, right? Obviously, they don't, I don't, I don't really know, know what a funnel is, is probably, right? They don't, you know? It, it, exactly, exactly. And it's, it relies on the brand. So I know if I can hit their audience with a way better offer, they're likely to at least try it, you know? And so, you know, we've, we've had stores that convert on Saturday, like seven or eight percent for, you know, wow. cold traffic, which is, yeah, it's pretty awesome. Obviously, it's not always like that. We're happy if we can get three, three to five percent. That's pretty awesome. But yeah, we've had some days, especially at the start of an offer where it just goes gangbusters, you know, because it is, especially back then, kind of early to mid 2017, where your post would get way more organic reach as well. We would, we could run ads at break even, but because they were getting, there was so much engagement with the ads, we were making an extra like 30, 40% in revenue on top just from the organic shares that don't get tracked in, uh, in ads manager. Wow. So you say, yeah. so it's a combination of, uh, the, the pricing model that like when that came in, the pricing model free press shipping was.